happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners, Will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation okay. where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racism, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. Yeah. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. Exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. Be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. 
land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring and when we come up, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Welcome to our 21st annual uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day of Service. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rob Delalu, and I am the Director of Multicultural Affairs here at Bristol Community College. And it is an honor to serve as the chair of this um, important and meaningful event. Last year at our event's 20th anniversary, we transformed um, the day of service and breakfast program, infusing our local talent of the South, of the youth of the South Coast by making the event an interactive day of service with workshops, activities for the community, young and old, members of Bristol community, uh, faculty, staff, alumni, community partners came together and provided services um, to carry forward last, and a lasting impact of Dr. King's mission of service, justice, equality, and togetherness. Last year, COVID hit and our world has forbid us to get together physically, but our spirits and determination to carry on a, the good work of Dr. King has brought us here together virtually. In a moment, you will hear from our great president of Bristol Community College, Dr. Uh, Laura Douglas, and our fantastic keynote, David E. Jones. They will drive home our theme for this year, which is how can service advance social justice? Today, the event, is a safe space to listen, learn, and share peaceful exchanges of ideas. As the events of January 6 resonates in our minds and the transition of power looming in just two days, now more than ever, the work and the vision of Dr. King should be the forefront of America's heart and soul. Let's celebrate, live, and learn today and make this event special. With that said, I with that said, I'd like to welcome the president of Bristol Community College, Dr. Laura Douglas, to present greetings and to introduce our guest keynote speaker, Dr. David E. Jones. Laura. Thank you, Rob, and good morning. I'm also proud to welcome you to a very special version of Bristol Community College's annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. Despite the pandemic, we recognize that now, more than ever, we needed to continue our day of service virtually to safely bring our community members together in dedication and recognition of Dr. Martin Luther King's le legacy. It has always been a celebration that brings together community members of all ages and various backgrounds with one common thread, service and social justice. We are grateful for everyone who took time to join us today, including members of our boards of trustees and our president emeritus, Jack Spraga, also members of our foundation, Thomas Murray and Peter Sylvia, our elective, elected officials, Senator Paul R. Feeney, Senator Mark R. Pacheco, 
Senator Michael J. Rodericks, Representative, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Senator, uh, uh, yes, Senator Paul Feeney, uh, and our representatives, Carol Doherty, Representative Carol A. Fiola, Representative Patricia A. Haddad, Representative James K. Hawkins, Representative Stephen S. Howitt, and Representative Paul A. Schmidt III, Representative Alan Sylvia, and also Representative Adam Scanlon. I'd also like to met, uh, welcome Mayor of Fall River, Paul Coogan. I'd also like to mention that uh, participating today is our former Mayor of Fall River, Ed Lambert, and also participating is Reverend Daryl Malden. Uh, I also would like to uh, welcome other members of our religious community leaders who are joining us today. And last but not least, I'd like to welcome Dr. David E. Jones, Chief Diversity Officer and Director of Talent Management at William Patterson University in Wayne, New Jersey. Many of us have been feeling upset and unsettled by what took place in our nation's capital on January 6th. What happened was disgraceful and disturbing. It was un-American and unpatriotic. One can't help but compare what we are seeing today to what took place more than 50 years ago. It's clear that Dr. King's mission of service and the pursuit of social justice is as important as ever. During this challenging time, what gives us hope for a more inclusive future? Under new presidential leadership, we will have the most diverse cabinet in the history of our nation. Congress is changing too. The Reverend Raphael Warnock, pastor of the Atlantic Church, Atlanta Church, once led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., will be the first black senator elected from Georgia. John Ossoff, former intern for civil rights leader and U.S. Representative John Lewis, will be the first Jewish member of the Senate from Georgia. Regionally, if Boston Mayor Marty Walsh is confirmed as U.S. Labor Secretary, his appointment allows Boston City Council President Kim Janey to serve in an interim role as, histo as the historic first black and woman mayor of Boston. Bristol Community College's mission and dedication aligns with Dr. King, who believed that it is the role of education to shape successful people. As educators and members of our communities, we can lead positive change by educating about democracy and social justice, supporting the peaceful exchange of ideas, empowering the search for truth, and facilitating opportunities for diverse leadership and civic engagement to shape successful people and communities. Dr. King spoke frequently about nonviolence, reconciliation, and creating a beloved community. There is another element that must be present in our struggle that then makes our resistance and nonviolence truly meaningful. That element is reconciliation. Our ultimate end must be the creation of the beloved community. As a Bristol Community College community, we are creating a beloved community through innovation, professional opportunities, and a strong economy. By lifting our students through a strong support system that empowers them forward, by creating a college going culture within our communities and region, and by equitably providing students what they need to be successful inside and outside of the classroom. Statistically, most often low income students and students of color have not received the resources that they need to succeed. We have seen this need grow during these challenging times. For example, the Bristol Care Team takes referrals for students who are experiencing challenges related to academic performance before it's too late. They help make connections to services based on self-reported wellness issues and other issues that can be addressed through established channels at Bristol. 
faculty and staff or fellow students who notice attendance issues, a drop in grades or other signs of possible personal problems can bring their concerns to the college's care team who are there to assist. Since the program began on September 20, 2018, the care team has received more than 2000 referrals and self referrals. The care fund has served more than 225 students with 94,000 awarded during Febu uh, since February, 2019 by offsetting short-term financial challenges for students in need of transportation assistance, bus passes, gas cards, minor care repairs, housing assistance, one-time partial rent payments, utilities, other living expenses, and educational supplies, including textbooks, equipment, and exam fees. It is a holistic approach that is supported in our new strategic plan launched this past September. When we began our strategic plan journey, we had no idea we would be facing a pandemic and nationwide unrest due to social and racial injustice. Our work has become even more critical and relevant. We have tailored our plan to align with our updated values, student success, communication, collaboration, respect, innovation, and inclusion. The mission we created together with our community, many of you here today, is even more critical today than we could have imagined. Bristol Community College provides an accessible, innovative, and inclusive education that prepares students to navigate, navigate and succeed in our ever-changing world. We continue to focus through the equity lens of Dr. King by finding ways to make the college more welcoming through currently remote cultural family nights, our social justice forums presented by Bristol's Multicultural Center, and the work of our Women's Center and the Joseph A. Marshall Veterans Center. Bristol is also launching the Innovative Parenting Advancement Pathways Program this semester to holistically support students, par student parents balancing their education while raising children. The program provides participants with valuable resources and support inside and outside of the college. Let's make history by closing the achievement gaps and fulfilling the dreams of our region's students, all of our students. Let's make history by breaking down barriers to success, by building a stronger, more diverse and understanding community, and by equitably lifting each other up in the pursuit of social justice. One moment, please. Despite our current challenging times, we are the change at Bristol Community College and throughout our communities. Where there is education, there is hope. Thank you again for your support and for joining us today. Now, it is my privilege to introduce to you our keynote speaker. Please welcome David, Dr. David E. Jones. Dr. David E. Jones currently serves as Chief Diversity Officer and Director of Talent Management at William Patterson University in Wayne, New Jersey. And he's a member of the, of the teaching faculty for the Equity Institute at the University of Southern California Race and Equity Center. Dr. Jones regularly leads diversity workshops, training sessions or keynotes to help individuals and organizations change culture and develop more inclusive communities. He is the recipient of the American College Personnel Association Commission for Social Justice Educators Award and the National Association for Student Personnel Administrators, NASPA, Doris Ching Award for Excellence as a Student Affairs Professional. Thank you. And I will now turn the program over to Robert DeLaLu. Yeah, so, um, so thank you again, Laura, for that great speech. And, um, and now I'd like to give the floor to you, Dr. David E. Jones. Please welcome. Thank you. Thank you both for, for um, just the, the wonderful, thoughtful 
uh, and meaningful introductions that, that we all just um, witnessed. Um, it was quite fitting as we begin our, and spend our time together for this annual MLK celebration. Good morning, everyone. Um, once again, thank you for the warm introduction. It's truly an honor to be with you all this morning, um, celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I wanna thank President Laura Douglas. I wanna thank the Multicultural Affairs staff, Melissa Rogers, Rob Dulu, and, and anyone else that has been involved in um, the planning and coordination of today's program. I wanna um, thank um, distinguished guests for being here with us this, this morning, uh, engaging in this conversation and this learning experience and also this remembrance of Dr. King. Um, it's truly an honor to, to see um, not just the college coming together, but members of the greater community coming together to, to really value the words and, and, and legacy of Dr. King. At this time, I want you all to, to center yourself in this moment, right? Um, many folks across the country are celebrating Dr. King in various ways, mostly virtual. And so I want to be able to create a space for us to, to listen to the words of Dr. King and center us in his, in his voice, right? Center us in his thinking and his values. And so if you're comfortable, as I, I transition to a video, please close your eyes and take in the words of Dr. King um, in, in one of his, uh, his final speech rather um, that he gave before his untimely assassination. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. So just as I say, we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around. We aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. Dr. King said, we have some difficult days ahead, 1968, 2021. We still have some difficult days ahead, my friends. Dr. King also said, America, be true to what you said on paper. 
Be true to what you said on paper. As President Douglas reminded us, we need to be true about what we said on paper. We need to hold ourselves accountable to what we said on paper for true equality and justice for all. The reality is many of us are still marching for our freedom. We're marching to be seen, to be heard, to feel affirmed and valued in our place in society. In a society that continuously victimizes, brutalizes and targets people because of the color of their skin, because of their country of origin, because someone wants to love someone who they wanna love or because of a spiritual belief. When Dr. King marched, he did so, so we wouldn't have to march our generation wouldn't have to be in the streets protesting for equity and justice. Yet we still protest. We still demand the worth of our own humanity. The service for equity and justice is needed now than more than ever before. So I ask you today to reimagine your purpose to serve. Is your purpose to serve rooted in equity and justice for everyone? Are you deeply committed to acts of service that serve humankind and make our society more just and equitable. Dr. King epitomized service in his acts, in his values, principles, and the way in which he lived his life. His legacy for service is one we should all embody. This is my challenge to all of you today. Dr. King and many others joined him in service acts for the greater good and for society. They fought for voting rights. They fought for economic justice. They fought for racial equity and so much more. The youngest person to receive the Nobel Peace Prize, Dr. King saw service as a way of life. He lived his life with a purpose to serve, to serve all who were treated unfairly and unjustly. He marched for miles, he marched for hours, from street corner to street corner, from state to state, across bridges to see a better tomorrow. We must do our part to continue marching so that his dream can become a reality where all people can feel freedom, freedom that we so rightfully deserve. Today, we remain in a blockage of racism, a blockage of sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, and other acts of injustice, where one can say it is more prevalent given access to social media and other media platforms. Dr. King once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Let me repeat, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. One of the biggest problems plaguing our society is thinking that if something doesn't affect you personally, it is not a problem. This is a lie we tell ourselves so that we can sleep at night amidst the gross injustices that happen across our nation. The truth is, it is our shared responsibility to fight for oppression, even if it doesn't affect us personally. This is what Dr. King did. This is how he served people. This is how he served people of all identities and all backgrounds. Everyone should have the same rights, but more importantly, the same access to those rights. What have you done to show up and serve these communities? If you haven't showed up to serve these communities, ask yourself, why? Why haven't I showed up? Why have I given more attention to one group than the other? And how can I be consistent in my fight for equity and justice in the way in which I serve the communities that I belong to? Racism in America has been the most longstanding pandemic in this country since its inception. Racial violence, racism, police brutality, and so much more continue to plague our communities. People's lives are cut short because of the color of their skin, because the color of their skin is seen as a weapon to those that fear them. 
So we need to march for the lives of those who are not here. Trayvon Martin should be here, but we march for him. Eric Gardner should be here, but we march for him. Sandra Bland should be here, but we march for them. Michael Brown should be alive today, but we march for him. Breonna Taylor should be here, but we march for her. George Floyd should be here, but we march for him. And countless others we continuously march for because their lives will not be lost because of racist and horrific acts of racial violence. It is important as we do this type of work, as we do this type of service, that we do it in an authentic and meaningful way. We don't want performative allies. We want authentic allies that are committed to this work, committed to understanding the history of what it means to serve, understanding that the murder, horrific murder of George Floyd is not a new condition. Emmett Till, the image you see in front of you, 1955, was brutally killed because he was accused of allegedly whistling to a white woman in Mississippi. So when I say this is not a new condition, this is not a new condition. And I feel more personally connected to this as someone who lives out the principles of Dr. King. My dad, who I love deeply, my biggest role model in my entire life, he grew up in the deep South in the 1950s, specifically Montgomery, Alabama. Um, he was born and he was raised in the height of racial injustice, segregation, and the civil rights movement. He grew up in an era where white only water fountains, restaurants and other public spaces were things he saw on a regular basis in addition to other forms of racial injustice. My dad knew as a black man at an early age that his life did not matter. And yet he fought. He marched with Dr. King from Selma to Montgomery. He spoke up for injustice and he made sure that my sister and I were afforded the rights and opportunities so that he, we didn't have to witness some of the horrific things in which he witnessed as a child. And so these are not new conditions. Michelle Alexander says, we have not ended racial caste in America. We have merely redesigned it. What you're seeing today is a redesignment of what's been happening for centuries across race. And so we need to do our part to dismantle it. 58 years ago, Dr. King delivered I Have a Dream speech, which Rob so eloquently shared earlier this morning. 53 years ago, Dr. King was assassinated. His life was taken from us at the tender age of 39. Someone thought his life did not matter. What he was fighting for was not important enough. 53 years later, we are still demanding for Black lives to matter. So we ask ourselves, how much has really changed? What is the work that remains for equity and justice for all that we could all do to continue living out Dr. King's legacy? So my friends, the time is now. The time is now to renew and reimagine our purpose to serve for equity and justice. Understanding that our silence to injustice is submissive to the injustice. If you've been silent, in the wake of George Floyd, if you've been silent in the wake of Breonna Taylor, if you've been silent around immigration rights, if you've been silent around LGBT rights, if you've been silent around rights for women, if you've been silent around rights for trans folks, now is the time to speak up. Dr. King wants your voice in the conversation. Dr. King wants you to activate your purpose to serve using your brilliance, using your voice, using your greatness and your passion for social justice so that we can bring more light into this world. There's a lot of opportunity that's right in front of us. With the transition of power in, in two days and the hope that that brings, 
We need to be able to do something to carry out Dr. King, his life, his legacy. Understand that serving others is not an easy task. What Dr. King did was not easy, but Dr. King was young. Dr. King was filled with passion. Dr. King saw the inequities of what was wrong. Dr. King embodied courage. He embodied courage. And so what I'm asking you all today is to release any fear and be courageous just like King. Because when we provide service to others, we must demonstrate a commitment to equity and justice where we release this fear. We release all fears of making a mistake. We release the fear of hurting a relationship. We release the fear of making the situation worse. We release the fear of people being mad at us for what we believe. We release the fear that things won't change. Release the fear of being attacked or judged or thought differently, right? We need to release these fears. We need to understand that with courage comes change. And we can be part of that change in the work that we do for the greater society that we're a part of. I wanna just share a little bit about how I've created courage for others. Uh, at a former institution I worked at, I started a MLK oratorical contest for college students. It was an opportunity for these students to use their voice and to create space for them to feel brave and feel empowered to talk about Dr. King and his life and legacy and think about ways in which they embody his life and legacy as a college student. The speeches that they gave were remarkable, inspiring, and led me to believe that this space that they had on campus was important. They felt affirmed, they felt seen, they felt valued, right? And they felt rewarded in the sense that their community, right? Other folks of color were coming together to celebrate the beauty of their words in the speeches that they gave. The room was packed year after year. People were standing in the back, just listening to the beautiful words of our students. And what I realized as the coordinator and overseer of this event is that I had created this space where individuals felt brave, they felt empowered, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful space. People listened, people were engaged. But what I also realized is that this space was temporary. That in the midst of all the racial injustice happening outside of the four walls in which the building we were in, that when these folks left this space, they could be subject to racial violence. They could be victims of police brutality or racial discrimination or racial bias. And so the fear is constant. The fear never removes itself from the realities of Black people and other folks of color. And so the work that we need to do is to create a space in society where those four walls that I created are permanently designed within the fabric of our country. That folks don't have to feel temporarily safe or temporarily brave, but that we can do something as change agents. as folks who want to serve so that we can incite the change that Dr. King wanted to see. I truly believe that this world can be better because of folks like yourself. And so what I wanna provide you all is 10 intentions to serve others for equity and justice. These 10 takeaways that you can embody in your life as you move forward and honor and remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Raise your consciousness. Be aware about your own ability to do your self work. Raise your consciousness around race, raise your consciousness around gender, sexual orientation, and other social identities that may or may not be salient in your life. But you have to be conscious of what others are experiencing. Understand your worldview. Look beyond your community, right? When it comes to serving, think globally, right? Think way in ways in which you can transform 
the lives of others beyond your initial sphere. Speak your truth. So important. Speak your truth. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise that your truth doesn't matter. Now, we may not always agree with everyone's truth, but everyone should feel empowered to speak their truth, to show up as their authentic self. It's also important to elevate the voices of those silenced. Many folks feel silence. Many folks are left out of the conversation, but we have the ability to serve in a way that elevates the voices for those that are silenced, that elevates the voices for those that matter. Understand privilege and power dynamics. Understand what white privilege means. Understand what it means to have privilege in other social identities. But don't just understand it, then use it in a way that gives access and voice to others who don't occupy that privilege because of the societal structures and constructs that has systemically disenabled these opportunities for people from certain racial and other social identity groups. Confront your own bias. We all have bias. No one is, by, is, is free from occupying any form of bias, right? Where we think or label certain groups of people who are different from our own. We have to confront that. We have to work toward dismantling it and understanding it, right? So really confront your bias. Think about what, you, what type of bias that you hold. Very important, and this is something Dr. King did so well, is practice empathy, right? Seek to understand and learn about the experiences of others so that you can be empathetic towards their development. You can be empathetic towards their growth in a way in which that brings you closer to understanding individuals' experiences. This is so important that we hold empathy as a high value and a high intention in our willingness and work to serve. It's important to also be more than an ally. Think about how you could be an advocate, be an accomplice, right? See change all the way through, right? From the time that you identify the problem to the time that the solution is rendered. You have to be willing to engage. And in, your intentions behind this have to be authentic. They have to be genuine and they have to be sustainable. Help to dismantle systemic oppression, right? There's no reason why we can't adjust policies, practices, and procedures in a way that dismantles the impression that we see every single day. And lastly, affirm others. Affirm folks who need to feel affirmed. Affirm folks who do not feel that sense of value in the communities that you occupy in the sense of affirmation, because it, it can be an intentional act of creating a sense of belonging and community within the, the spaces in which you occupy. So if you operate under these 10 intentions, when you are serving others and using an equity and justice framework, you will continue to highlight and actualize the principles in which Dr. King so eloquently spoke about and worked toward as a social justice warrior. Dr. King once said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Let this opportunity today be an awakening for you to become vocal about things that matter. Let today be the start of how you move toward change change in ways in which you serve, change in ways in which you create space for others. What will you stop doing, right? What will you start doing? What will you continue doing? Because you know it's working well. There are things we can stop doing that may not be working well. And there are things we can start doing as a result of our learning and our awareness and our ability to raise our consciousness, all right? And so, 
Let's find those ways because the days of being silent are no more. We need your voice. We need your activism. We need your willingness to show up and be ready now more than ever before. And so the journey continues. Change for the greater good starts now. Living out a life that embodies what Dr. King was committed to starts now. And I'm asking all of you to think about how you can continue this journey, continue this journey of serving others like Dr. King did. This is how we carry on his life. This is how we carry on his legacy. Give full attention to others who are different from you. Elevate the voices of those underrepresented and marginalized. Practice empathy and learn about the identities of others. Ask appropriately if you don't know. We don't know everything. It's okay to ask. Listen and learn, right? So if you're going to be silent, use that opportunity to be listening, to be learning, so that you are more equipped to do the work that you need to do in a more meaningful way. Help normalize ally work. It's okay to serve others. It's okay to speak up for others. It's okay to speak out for others. Let's normalize that so that it's a welcome condition in all the communities. And use your privilege to create change. Your ability to be aware around your privilege can help facilitate that change that we need to see in the world, right? You can speak up against economic injustice. You can speak up against voting rights. You can speak up and speak out against folks who are disabled. Speak out against the LGBT community and how we can better serve them. Speak out, speak out for women, speak out for people of color. Think about where your privilege shows up in those identities and how you can create change. And most importantly, hold yourself and others accountable. Hold yourself and others accountable. That is so important. And so I like to read a pledge to you because as we listen to Dr. King's words in the beginning, he said, we have some difficult days ahead. He said, we need to be able to commit to those difficult days in a way that is going to bring us the justice that we need to see. And so I want you all to commit to this pledge, commit to living out this life. That whenever I see poverty, whenever I see injustice, whenever I see the wealthy and powerful seek advantage at the expense of the vulnerable, I will step forward and take action in defense of those who find their voices silenced and opportunity stunted. I will do so whether my actions make me part of a powerful movement or whether I stand alone. Now, there were times when Dr. King stood alone. There were times when Dr. King ignited a powerful movement. So you can be on both sides and advocating for the change that we need to see. And so we are all in this together, folks. We are all in this together. In this celebration of Dr. King on this annual holiday, we remember that Dr. King, his life and his legacy and his fight for justice and equity. We remember all of that. We remember his willingness to serve others, serve communities to ensure everyone had the same rights and liberties. Dr. King gave his life in his fight for equality for all so that one day we can bask in the joy of freedom and true liberation. More than 50 years later, we still seek to enjoy what he so tirelessly worked for. So let's remain steadfast in our continued march for freedom so that one day we can let freedom ring for everyone. Bristol Community College, let's do your part to one day let freedom ring for all. Our service for equity and justice must remain until we are all free. Because if one of us are still marching for their freedom, we are all still marching for our freedom. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you, um, David. What an excellent uh, keynote. Please, everyone, if you go into the reactions, go in there, give a round of applause, heart emojis, all of the uh, good thumbs ups, everything. Uh, what an excellent way to start our morning. Um, thank you so much for that um, inspiring words um, and just understand the premise of how we can advance, how service can advance social justice. And uh, David's remarks this morning really puts in perspective with so many individuals from around South Coast Massachusetts, uh, legislators, mayors, presidents, administrators, um, you know, students, you know, we all can be in that impact. Um, and I absolutely uh, enjoyed that very, very much so. And thank you so much for your, your time and your effort on that, on David. It's, it, it really uh, touched home with me and I'm pretty sure it touched home with many of us here on the call today. Um, thank you. you know, what's great about this event is this is what we, what we are here to do. We're all to come together um, all different walks of life, different experiences, different lenses, different visions, and we're uh, and we're here as as one. Um, there's a reason why we you registered and signed up to it, despite COVID, and we could have easily took the morning off. Is because in our hearts somewhere we all feel that the, the need to give back to our community and to be part of something greater than ourselves. Um, and with that with that said, we will continue to do this work. We are sharing a few resource guides. We are going to share with you newsletters and things where you can get involved, learn and live and, 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 and kind of really put yourself in a position to help and to understand how we can elevate um, one another and ourselves in this society as things have been extremely difficult over the past um, several months and we have seen it grow and hopefully we are the change and believe that you are the change and we can make uh, a greater good for, our, for ourselves and for our communities. Today, um, again, I would like to thank uh, Dr. David Jones um, for, for this wonderful um, uh, keynote. And I also like to thank uh, President D Laura Douglas for allowing us to do, uh, to have this event and carry it on um, for our 21st year. Um, this is not over. Uh, we do have uh, workshops that are available and I would like to let you know how we're going to do that. Um, there will be two um, workshops in the next few minutes that will open up for those who we are able to attend. The workshops will, um, you'll have a choice when you can go into your Zoom room. Um, it'll, it'll pop up the two different rooms. One will be um, led by Dr. Ron Weisberger, which is MLK Teachings. So you get to learn the history of MLK and a lot of the teachings of um, his great work. And the other would be a continuation of Dr. Jones's advancing um, service into social justice. Uh, how service can advance social justice, I'm sorry. As those rooms open up, you can join them. We'll probably take a good, a little five minute break if you need to catch coffee, stretch your legs, um, you know, go to the bathroom, wherever it may be, you can do that. Um, if you have to jump off the call and then come back in, we will have somebody into the, we will have someone waiting in the lobby to direct you into the room that you so choose to go to. Um, once the um, keynotes begin, um, the, the chat will be active and open, so you will be able to have uh, open dialogue and conversations and share mute. I know for the last um, 45 minutes to an hour um, that was disabled, but now it will be able into those rooms. So you can have full dialogue and ask Dr. Jones questions, also Dr. Ryan Reisberger questions to kind of really, um, you know, grow your, your inner depth of social justice, I'm okay, and, and how we can advance all of this. Um, I would also like to thank everyone as we are, as we are moving forward um, and remind you about our social justice forums. This semester, our, our goal um, is to continue our social justice forums and our focus this semester will be the experiences of our black and African American students. Uh, male students and then how um, the impact in education and how that we will kind of advance that is, as far as being into social justice um, as we move forward. So again, I'd like to thank everyone. Please, if you are leaving, if you have an opportunity, um, join our, um, our website and you get a lot of information on there. It's at bristolcc.edu backslash MLK for more and more information. And, in, and any of the other things that we are doing for not just Bristol, but for the external community as well. 
So as I leave you all, um, and if I don't see you, please thank you again for joining. Over 112 people joined us this morning, um, which is, you know, in a virtual world, it's, 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 you know, a great thing to see that this many people participated and we will be able to uh, continue this work moving forward.